What a day in the NFL, 14-2 and two run. Let's talk some football. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and you already see this smile on my face. What an awesome, awesome week 13 on our channel. Crazy day in the NFL. Uh, you thought we were hot in the NBA. We are sizzling right now in the NFL. How about 11 player prop wins in a row? And like you heard earlier, a 14-2 and two run overall. Wow. 8-1 and one in week 13 for our best week of the season. We had an 8-2 one earlier, but 8-1 and one beats it. Gotta love it. The Steelers blew a perfect 9-0 and day we could have had, but that's right. We'll just blame it on the rain delay, even though I don't think that mattered at all because the Steelers suck. But we're going to go over the bets recap, and man, Talking sports is fun, but winning bets is really fun. That's for sure. Uh, trends so far. We're recording this during the Sunday Night Football game, but the trends, 9-4, and four, including the trends parlay winner for us. Not only did we go 8-1, and one, we won a plus 565 winner. Hopefully, you guys tailed that one. The trends are now 90-46 and 46 on the year if you just blindly tail all of them. So they've been rolling. Uh, announcement before we get into the video, though. NBA preview and best bets video. That will be out also. Uh, so be sure to check that out. There's only two games. It's the NBA play-in season tourney games, and apparently they're supposed to mean a lot. So we're just going to pretend they mean a lot. But I'm still going to treat them as two regular season games. Uh, but on a roll there, 4-2 and two weekend, 38-14 and 14 run in the NBA. We just got to keep our head down, keep grinding, and keep this roll going. So uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, you may not have seen us do a Sunday night video. We used to do these all, every single weekend, but last two weeks because of vacations and things going on, or maybe one week, I don't even know, but uh, we did skip one. So in these videos, we do the week 13 bets recap. I'm going to talk just a couple NFL takeaways and what I saw from the weekend, and then we're going to preview the Monday night football game, give you out one lean and one best bet, and see if we can stay hot. So this has been a wild run last couple months. Uh, be sure to hit that like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know who you guys got for Monday Night Football or just say anything you want to help that algorithm. Our channel is growing because of you guys and all the likes and comments and everything. So thank you. I appreciate it. Let's chase down 17,000 subscribers. Now, before we get into that glorious, glorious bets recap, a little word from our sponsor. All right, there it is, a Monday Night Football free square with our sponsor, Thrive Fantasy. I know I've been talking about this, guys, but it is a 100% first deposit match all the way up to 250 You look at other places, you can get 100 maybe 150 These guys are giving you $250. You do not have to bet all the money on the first bet, but they are giving you a free square. That's right, Jamar Chase, over a half a receiving yard. To get this first deposit match, promo code JAVO, use the link below, and then take this free square of Jamar Chase, Add it to another uh, player prop that we're going to give out today also on the video. Um, you can make a two-leg, three-leg, four, five. You can see how much you win with each parlay right there. It's a great deal, guys. You're getting free money and part of your first bet. So go join Eligible in Over 30 States. Use the promo code JABO. And now let's go check out all the green check marks. There it is, guys. There is the eight in one day, nine in one, including that trends parlay. And by the way, you got to enjoy your winning days and winning weekends like we are right now. The Discord's going crazy this weekend. We are all loving it. Uh, betting is hard. So when you have good days, good weekends, enjoy it. But stay disciplined with your betting in the future because we're in it for the long haul. So here we go. Lions minus four, minus 112. It looked like it was going to be a blowout. And then the Lions blew it. And then they figured it out at the end. A huge interception to get them back in it. Um, but they were ahead the whole game. But luckily they covered. It was closer than I wanted. But nice winner there. Steelers money line under at 48 and a half. Uh, Steelers just didn't show up. Cardinals put a beat down on them. I don't know what happened, but they just didn't show up. So it was a bad read by me, and they lost the game. Rams team total over 20 and a half. I think they ended up with uh, 30 something points when it's all said and done. It was a little closer than I wanted at the end. They were stuck on 20, um, but they got the job done. A big interception return in that one. That was huge for the Rams. So um, nice winner. Again, the Browns defense continues to not be elite on the road. Trends parlay. Holy cow. Finally, we were due for a win. Under 40 and a half. That game had six. Six points. Jets team total under 16 and a half. I think the Jets scored six or eight or something single digits, and it was ugly. Then the over 24 and a half first half, Miami Washington. That got the job done because Miami scored 45 in the game. Anytime touchdowns. You know what the beauty of these were is that Derrick Henry and Rashad White, they scored early in the game. And if I mentioned in that video on Friday, Sprinkle maybe a little bit on Henry, two touchdowns. If you did, you cashed it because he got two. That was huge. And then White touchdown, like I said, got one in the first quarter. 
Player props. Holy cow, 11 wins in a row on these. Derrick Henry over 62 and a half. I don't know what he ended up with, but he went well over this. Tyron Williams over 63 and a half. A little bit of a sweat, uh, but then got it done. I think ended with uh, 80-something yards. And I think Henry got close to about 100, too. Uh, this third one. This is maybe the bet of the weekend. Riley Patterson over two and a half PATs, which are extra points. Five minutes into the game, I think it was. Maybe eight minutes. I don't know exactly. But somewhere halfway through the first quarter, he had already made three extra points. That was freaking beautiful. Thank goodness, because the Lions were in a lull for a while, so we would have had to sweat it out. Uh, and then the Thursday night football game, you guys already know. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Brandon Cooks, 25-plus receiving yards each. A nice cash in the first half on that one. So that's our Week 13 bets recap. Let's go check out the overall season record. I know you guys have been asking on Discord and other places uh, where we keep our record and everything. It is in this video. Uh, we'll try to maybe show it on our Wednesday and Friday video, too, just so you guys have it. But my game bet's 30 and 20, up 9.59. Ryan has not been on for a while due to life, work, sick, all that kind of stuff. Uh, anytime touchdowns, we're now up to 11 and 15, down 2.03, working back to even. And then player props, 29 and 22, plus 7.26 units. The trends parlay, if we counted that, it'd be even better. We are up 5.30 units right now, but that is not official. Just want to point that out. Overall record, 74 and 66, up 8.05 units. I want to get more. I want to get all the way to 20 by the end of the season, so let's see if we can do that. So that's the bets recap for week 13. Now let's talk some takeaways. All right, let's talk some takeaways of what we just saw in week 13. Uh, I like to talk sports. It's not just betting. I like to come on here and just kind of talk sports with you guys. Uh, curious to see. What you guys thought of week 13, let me know any takeaways that you got. Leave a comment below. But this first one, the Texans are a legitimate playoff contender. We've talked about them earlier this season. D'Amico Ryans has done a ter tremendous job with this team. I mean, they have just been unbelievable. People picked them to win two, three, four games. They are 7-5 and five now. It's been unbelievable. And when I watch C.J. Stroud, Ohio State Buckeye, baby, that's right. Um, he's just unreal. He looks like a veteran. If you didn't know it, his pocket presence looks good. He makes big throws. He is not scared of the big moment at all, um, and he limits his mistakes, and that's all you can ask for in a quarterback. He seems like a good leader, according to his teammates and everything. They have a winner in C.J. Stroud, and the defense has picked it up. I've just been very, very impressed by the Houston Texans. This franchise now has draft picks, a good head coach, a young star, star quarterback, and all of that is because Deshaun Watson couldn't just lay down and take a regular massage. All of it is because of that. So good for the Houston Texans. Deshaun getting paid big money. Always hurt. Inconsistent right now. Texans, good work by you guys. Second takeaway. Wow, the 49ers just put up, beat down on the Eagles, and imposed their will today. That was insane. Uh, they out-yarded them by a million. They, got, they scored, I think, almost like 40 or 50. I don't know what it ended up being. I started preparing for this video. That game was a blowout. Um, but they are pushing the Eagles around. I mean, they are bullying them. And you never see teams do that to the Eagles. Um, in Philadelphia especially, this 49ers team, after that bye, they looked like a Super Bowl championship-type team again. They were all able to pass the ball, and what was most impressive to me, they were able to run the ball. McCaffrey had a great game on the ground. Debo had some good runs. You don't run on the Eagles, but this team did. It's because of their offensive line. It's because of Shanahan and those schemes. But if Brock Purdy and this passing game play like they did today, I don't know if this team's beatable. I'm going to be honest. Now, can he do that all the time? We will find out. Eagles are obviously not the toughest test when it comes to pass defense, but that was impressive. And if they're going to run the ball like that, it may not even matter. So very impressive by the 49ers. Uh, it looks like we might be seeing that game, the NFC Championship game yet again. We'll see if it's in San Fran or Philadelphia. But uh, Philadelphia, that was a good little wake-up call for them. So good work by the 49ers. Now, a quick third takeaway that I have. I've already talked about it before. I just have to say it again. Belichick has to be fired after the season. Maybe they're already talking about it or they're going to let him resign or do something. But he has proven to me over and over again he is not an elite coach. I think he is a great defensive mind, but he's not an elite coach. If you are an elite coach, you are not this pathetic. You're not. You're just not this bad. You figure out ways. Again, they just scored zero points. They are like 2-10 and 10 this year. It is atrocious on offense. And you never, like I said, elite coaches, they're held to higher standards where they don't have seasons like this. This is absolutely terrible. Um, it just shows you how much Tom Brady helped on the field for them. And obviously, I know you need a good quarterback and all that, but you know what? Elite coaches figure out ways to get some more out of their quarterbacks than what Belichick is getting out of them. So if I was the uh, Kraft and the Patriots owner, I would I would definitely let him go if he's not going to walk away. But um, again, he'll make a great defensive coordinator. I'm sure someone else will hire him because he's Belichick. But uh, 
I think the time is now for him to be gone in New England. But again, I think I've already talked about it. But it's just crazy to me how bad he has been doing since Tom Brady's been gone. But anyways, those are my NFL takeaways. And now let's talk some football, baby. It's the Monday Night Football game. All right, the final game of Week 13 takes us out to Jacksonville. We got the Jags hosting the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday Night Football. Jags a whopping minus 10 with an over-under of 40 points in this one. Uh, Jake Browning's the quarterback for the Bengals. As you know, that is not good. He played for the UW Huskies a little while, little while back. Shout out to the UW Huskies, by the way, making the college football playoffs around my neck of the woods. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Travis Etienne was questionable this game. He is looking like he's going to play in this one. The Bengals struggle defensively, let's face it. They're 26th in pass yards allowed, 29th in rush yards allowed. And now they play one of the most balanced attacks in the NFL in the Jaguars who can run the ball or throw it. Uh, and the Jags are also becoming elite run defense, top five in the league right now. And uh, their one weakness is pass defense. But I don't know if that matters because Jake Browning is the quarterback. Uh, Jags also have the second best third down defense in the NFL, so they know how to get off the field. Now, ATS, Bengals, 4-6-1 and one this year, 2-3 and three ATS on the road. The Jaguars, 8-3 and three against the spread, 2-3 and three ATS at home, which means they are a perfect 4-0 and oh also on the road for, against the spread. It's pretty incredible. Uh, over under Bengals six and five to the under Jags the same with six and five trends that I mentioned in the Wednesday video in case you forgot it Jaguars nine and two against the spread in the first half this season within they are minus five and a half on the first half line if you guys are interested in that one they've been playing well in the first half now before we get into the best bet let's talk leans uh, I go I lean Jaguars minus 10 in this game if I had to pick I think they win like 27 10 or something like that um and you know 10's a lot though i liked it more when it was like eight eight and a half earlier in the week but it just skyrocketed unfortunately other than that maybe a six point teaser it doesn't take them all the way down to under three unfortunately and what a six point teaser is obviously is you take what you're betting and take it down six points in your favor so in this case i would do jaguars minus four and then take the under 46 so i took the total all the way up to 46 and took the under so you put those together you should get minus 120 i know on DraftKings you do FanDuel might have higher odds on teasers now. They're starting to raise them, which I don't love. But uh, those are just a couple leans, not like really strong feels. I haven't made these bets yet, but my best bet in this game, can we make it 12 player prop wins in a row? Here we go. Evan Ingram, four plus catches, and Jamar Chase, 40 plus receiving yards, minus 108 on FanDuel. Now, usually when I do these alternate props, just so you guys know, uh that means i like their original prop so ingram's over four and a half catches if you just want to bet that by itself i don't mind that as well jamar chase is in the 50s i think he goes over that too but here we go ingram for ingram four plus catches he this tight end for the jags has the most catches on the team that's right more than any other receiver on the jaguars right now he has four plus catches wait for it in all 11 games this season that's right let me do the math uh 100 hit rate that's what that is he now faces the Bengals, who have allowed the fourth most catches to tight ends this year with 70 receptions in 11 games. They just gave up nine catches for 120 yards to Pat Fryermuth for the Steelers. That is not pretty. Uh, I think Ingram can have a huge game being one of the best tight ends in the league right now. Um, like I said, I like him over four and a half catches. He did end on exactly four catches. He has three times this season, so I just took it down to four. Added it with Mr. Jamar Chase. We all know he is a top three receiver. There's no question about that. And the only issue here is Browning is his quarterback. I get that. I'm not going to sit here and say Browning's good. Um, but all I'm asking here is for the, a top three receiver in the league to get 40 yards. I'm not asking him to get 90 or 100 or anything like that. Against a, bad, a better sorry, Steelers defense last week with Jake Browning at quarterback, he had four catches for 81 yards. He is still the man. Uh, Jaguars don't have a great pass defense. They're not terrible, um, but it is kind of a weakness. They are giving up the 13th most yards to wide receivers this year. And again, I don't know if I told you, I only need 40. Jaguars did just give up 104 to Nico Collins, 50 to Tank Dell, 40 to Robert Woods last, last week. That's only three wide receivers that got there. Two weeks ago, they gave up two Titans receivers. They allowed them to go for 40-plus receiving yards in DeAndre Hopkins and Chris Moore. So they still give up receiving yards. I think the game script is going to say the Bengals are going to be behind most of the game. They're going to have to throw the ball a lot. They're not going to be able to run the ball. I also like Joe Mixon under 49 and a half rushing yards, by the way, just as a, another lean. They're going to have to throw it a ton. I would be shocked if Jamar Chase doesn't just get 40. That's all I need, guys. So give me Evan, Evan Ingram, four-plus catches, and Jamar Chase, 40-plus receiving yards at minus 108 on FanDuel as my best bet 
for Monday Night Football. That's what we got for the Week 13 recap and Monday Night Football preview. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit that like button. Leave a comment below. Keep helping this channel grow as we chase down our first 17,000 subscribers. Absolutely crazy. Uh, the Discord link is below. Just as a reminder, over 2,000 people in there right now giving each other a lot of help. It is free, so be sure to go join that. And, uh, man, this has been a lot of fun. Let's stay hot. Let's keep grinding. Remember to stay disciplined with your bets. NBA video for those two play-in season tournament games are gonna is going to be out pretty soon. Let's see if we can stay hot in the NBA as well. So hope everyone has a great Monday. We'll talk to you soon.